My name is Marita Shustak. It took me four years to put together this workshop, which is itself a sort of odd amalgamation of ideas and influences. The inspiration for this wall actually goes back to 13th century Europe. At that time, fictive masonry was popular, meaning that artisans would paint fake stone walls over existing walls. Often the faux masonry hid beneath it a wall that was also made of stone, but of a cheaper and less fashionable variety. Red paint was popular, as were floral motifs within the stones. Designs such as these are known as stones and roses. I first learned about this style from watching a great documentary series with my favorite historian and archaeological trio, Ruth Goodman, Peter Ginn, and Tom Pinfold. In the series, the trio went to Getalong Castle in France, which is the site of this huge undertaking, the largest archaeological experiment in the world. They are building a castle using period-appropriate everything. Techniques, designs, tools, everything. It's all highly researched, and it's just such a fantastic project that really highlights the beauty and technology that was shining bright in the Dark Ages. Other notable places the Stones and Roses motif can be spotted besides Getalon include the reconstruction work in the Tower of London, as well as inside a crypt in Worcester Cathedral. While I drew a lot of inspiration for this project from these reproductions and historical sources, I used modern techniques and materials throughout. I also chose to change it up by laying out my stones in a Flemish brick pattern, simply because I thought it was aesthetically pleasing. I started out by mixing a glaze and applied it to the wall with a sheepskin pad to build up the base texture. While I lost most of my footage from this step, I do have this video from when I redid this smaller section of wall later in the project. I utilized a laser level and drew out my pattern in chalk. What followed was the painstaking process of hand painting in all of the lines. Partway through, I started to get the sense that the color I had mixed for the lines on this section of the wall was too bold, leading me to repaint it from the ground up like you saw earlier in the video. Looking back, I might have been able to get away with doing a wash to tone it down, rather than completely repainting everything and having to draw the stones again, but say la vie. For the flowers, I drew up two slightly different designs in Photoshop and used a cutting machine to turn them into stencils that I could use to stamp the pattern onto the wall. I alternated between the two versions of the six petal flower that I had made and also varied the orientation of the flowers in each brick to keep a lively feel to the piece. Finally, I mixed up some green paint and applied it to the wall to create a sort of mossy weathered effect, primarily through a spraying and dabbing technique.
I converted this second-hand piece of furniture into a gothic-inspired jeweler's workbench to go with the vibe, and added in the cedar cabinet that I got at an estate sale. With those two additions and a touch of floral accents, I brought the project to a close. All in all, it took a really long time, but I am happy with the way it turned out. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was interesting to you, and if it was, stick around because I have a lot more ideas in the works that I hope to share with you soon. Take care.